Hi everyone, in this uh, small video tutorial, we will talk about how to simulate a projectile motion uh, using an Excel sheet. So, let's assume that we are throwing a ball uh, in the air at the velocity of uh, 100 meter per second and the angle of the throw is suppose 60 degrees. And we have a gravitational force G which will act uh, towards uh, the ground so it will try to bring bring the ball towards the ground and the acceleration from the gravity is 9.8 uh, meter per second square so second root second so now from here we want to calculate the the trajectory of the ball uh, in the air so let's uh, first assume uh, so we can use a numerical approach so let's define the time so time will be equal to uh, zero in the beginning and then let's say we have a dt so dt uh, is the small time step at which we will calculate the uh, point uh, or the position of the ball so the smaller the dt the more accurate our calculation will be but this is just example so i'll just take a point 0.1 uh, second here right so now as you can see the time uh, with the time uh, so each time the time will increase by 0.1 uh, second or dt and i'm putting a dollar sign here so that uh, it does not change the position of dt so you can see that so the time increases from uh, with the interval of 0.1 second now let's take the velocity so velocity in x direction so now velocity in x direction will be equal to uh, velocity multiply by sine of uh, the angle at which we have thrown the ball so here uh, because this is axle so we have to convert the angle into radians first so i'll say radians and then I'll click on 60 degree and I put a dollar sign here and dollar sign here so it says that the velocity in x direction should be 86.60 meter per second and the velocity in y direction should be equal to uh, again velocity into the cos of radians angle and then again a dollar sign here so that will be the velocity in the y direction so now uh, we can uh, check that have we done the calculation right or not so let's take this cell and I square the velocity in the x direction and then add it to the square of velocity in the y direction and you can see that the answer is uh, 100,000 and if it takes square root of this number then that will be equal to 100 which is actually the velocity so that means we have done it correctly because sine square plus cos square is equal to 1 so here that's why the velocity in x direction and y direction the square of the sum of them should be also 100 so now um, let me center that so now uh, as we know that in x direction there is no uh, force which is acting because it's a horizontal direction we are ignoring the resistance due to the air but in y direction we have a acceleration so when we go at point 1 after uh, point 1 second there will be a acceleration which is acting opposite to the velocity of the ball so what will happen is that the velocity will change like this so we'll say velocity which was at time 0 plus uh, or minus gravitational force into dt so um, how how did i come up with this so again uh, we have a velocity and this velocity will change according to the acceleration so you can see that there are two seconds in the denominator for g 
So if you multiply with the dt, then we get a unit of velocity. So we are subtracting that velocity from the velocity in the y direction. However, the velocity in the x direction would remain same. So we can drag these numbers down and see that the velocity in y direction is changing but velocity in x direction is same. And then we can calculate uh, the distance. So at the very beginning, the x will be 0 and uh, y will also be 0. And then uh, it will change. So the position in x direction will change according to the time. So we'll say that uh, velocity into dt. And same way for the y, so velocity into dt. So now we can drag it down and see that the position. Um, so uh, I forgot to do one more thing. So here the x, so this is the amount or the distance which the ball has moved in the x direction. But uh, so we, we should add the position which was there at the initial step. So I have to say x plus the amount or the distance it has traveled in uh, time dt. So same with here, we have to add the initial position. So now if we drag it, you can see that the position will change. So this is how uh, it will go and we can keep uh, dragging it for a long, long time. And now I can plot x versus y to look at the trajectory of the ball. So if I if I plot this line x versus y and say so this is what is the tra trajectory of the ball and uh, if I want to assume that uh, I'm I'm not standing on a mountain but I'm standing on a plain ground so uh, I can uh, just uh, end the simulation when the ball touches the ground so for that I can just format the axis and uh, set the minimum uh, to be zero and maximum suppose let's uh, uh, do it uh, I have to see how much uh, what is the range of the simulation but let's do 500 here and uh, same way for the y let's fix it to uh, 2500 and uh, now you can see that this is the trajectory of the ball so now i can change these numbers and look at how the ball will move in exo uh, in the air so let's say that velocity uh, the angle i change it to 45 degrees so you can see so now uh, you can see that uh, the simulation is not complete so i should uh, simulate it more so here i i will increase the range to suppose 1000 points yeah select data add it and say six and six so now we can look at this again so as you can see when i have 45 degrees then it goes to around uh, 1000 or uh, 1039 and if i change it to 55 then uh, instead of going to 1059 it goes to 982 so as you remember uh, when you learned the uh, trajectory of a bowl the ball goes to the maximum distance when the angle you throw at uh, is 45 degree so now you can see that when it was throwing at 45 degree it was going to 1050 but when i throw at 55 it goes to around 950 and again if i throw at uh, uh, 35 then again uh, it goes to around 
975 so the maximum uh, distance you will cover uh, will be when you throw it at 45 so this confirms that our simulations are correct so now you can play around with it saying instead of 35 if I throw it at uh, uh, at 20 degrees then uh, it goes uh, pretty much up and if I throw it um, at uh, 80 degrees then it uh, doesn't go up but mostly uh, towards the ground uh, it doesn't take a lot of height so i hope this uh, tutorial will help and i'll see you next time